my video. Okay. I flipped that, that door, so I hope she opened it up. And okay. I got you, Bobby. No doubt, no doubt. But feel free to reach back out anytime. I got your number now, man. I, I kind of feel happy. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. I send you a text and and you text me back or whatever, man. I really appreciate you taking time out, making phone calls back to people that text you, man. Ah, uh, no problem, no problem, Bob. I appreciate the support. All right. Take All right, now sir. be blessed. All right. Okay. Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, what if you got a kid with a white woman? <laughs> okay, let me hit up Monte real quick. We got a snow bunny crisis. Let me see. We're going to work it out, though. Peace and love, brother Monte. What's good? Dr. Umar, I just uh, saw your text. We didn't speak earlier, did we? No. Nah. Hey, what's, what's up? What's man? good? I, I, I saw your text. You said you got a baby by a white woman, right? Yeah. And you said the system respects your child's white mother, but it won't respect the child's black father. So, so I'm just basically speaking on, because I mean, uh, you know, and not like I kind of, like I don't know my way, but it's, it's, it's like I'm just coming at how the system do men who want to be in their, in, their, in their child's life. Right, right. Like, like how do you, because I get people that tell me like, hey, you know, fall back from the mother, but then, you know, at the, the age my child is, like. How old know, is the child? He's two months, so it's not oh, like I can call him. So if we right. have you know, our arguments or whatever, um, you know, she, you know, want to go through her arguments, block me on the phone, stuff like that, and I'm just supposed to sit with that. Okay, I, I, I feel you. Uh, have you? I would hate for you to have to get into the system this early, but if you and the mother can't see eye to eye, do you think it's time for you to establish some physical custody with the child while they're young, or do you want to try to work it out? Well, not at all. I mean, you know, but it, it, again, I, I don't even know if it's an answer to, that that can be answered. But it's like, you know, me, me and the mother, because we feel like a child shouldn't have to go through that type of situation. Agreed. We try, we try to fix it, but it's, it's always a clash. And then it's like, OK, well, speaking on mother's standpoint, hey, I got full control. I'm going to take the son. I'm going to do this. I'm going to. I just don't know how to get around it. How old are you and how old is the mother? We're a year apart. I'm 26. She's 25. Oh, y'all young. Y'all young with the baby. Okay, so she's still in that age where she's going to play them games right. too. Right, right. Now, the, how's her family feel about you? I mean, all white people are racist, but are they obviously racist? Are they, you know, uh, aggressively racist like do they care whether or not the child sees their black father or not i guess is what i'm asking to be honest i mean her mom hate me you know and Ooh. my mom my mom is, is like the same thing because of what's going on like it's like oh other man people. oh man oh it's man like, i'm gonna say it's real bad because we're still mature enough to kind of keep you know keep talking even if it ended up being a friendship you know, but my my whole issue and, and, and thing I want to get on is like just how cruel the system can be to people. Oh, for sure. It. They cruel. They cruel even when the mom black. <laughs> you know, I go through it. So, you know, I hate walking into that family court and they stick it to me because I am Dr. Umar. So I really catch it, you know, but I do agree, though, because your son's mother is white. That white privilege is definitely going to be kicking in. Uh, however, your son being black, he ain't going to be able to live his life as a white boy. And she knows that or she better know that. And the white grandmother better know that. And you're going to have to fight to be in his life because you cannot let them try to raise your black son like he's a white boy. Or raise him like he's a multicultural or biracial. That's all crap. You talk to any mixed race black man, he's going to tell you he's still black. He may have gotten a little bit of privilege because he was lighter, but he's still black. And they cannot prepare him for what he's going to have to go through in this world. And we don't need him having no identity crisis either. So I think 
if 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 the if the white grandmother hates you, bro, if the then I think you got to go to court and get you some custody right now, man. I, I really do. I think right now you it's set the tone. For the child too. Say that again. It's good for the child to go through that. Cause I, well, remember now, remember now, is is the child breastfed or bottle fed? Bottle fed. Well, if the child bottle fed, you could take them. See, if the child was breastfed, then, you know, they're going to cater to the mother because the baby can only be fed by the mother's breast. But if that child is on a bottle, there's nothing wrong with you getting the baby on the weekend. Because the baby's so young, I would probably only do a day. I would do one day or even just a half a day. You might set it up where from now until six months, you get the baby for six hours on Saturday, hypothetically. Once the baby's six months to a year, you get them all day Saturday. Once the child is one year old, I'm taking them for the whole weekend. You know, you can kind of stutter step it, but um, you want your child to know who you are, though. You know, so I think you need to get something now where even if it's just a few hours, bro, you are spending some private time with your son. You got to do that, man, because he needs that African side. He needs to feel your energy, bro, because right now he's around all Neanderthals, and that's just not going to be good for him. So, me up is I know it can be done. I see, like, right. rich people, you know, and, they, and, and some of these people, they got full custody of their kids, and it's like, I got my own place. I got my own stuff together. You know what I mean? Like, so right. is it a money situation? Like, No, it's separate. In Pennsylvania... Uh, child support and custody are two separate processes. Okay. You feel me? So when you go for custody, however much time you want, they're not going to bring up the money. And when you go for the money, they're not going to bring up the custody. It's separate in PA, which to me, I don't like it because that's how the women get the money and don't let you see your child. You know what I'm saying? But in your case, it's the opposite because you're going to go for the custody. Now, here's the one thing you got to worry about. Okay. When you take her for the custody, I'm damn near certain she's going to take you for money. So that's where it gets touchy. Because right? like if, you're, if you're in a position to pay it, then cool. If you're not in a position to pay it, we don't need you getting caught up in that child support thing where they start locking you up for not being able to pay. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful right now because if you can pay it, go ahead. Get your custody. Let her take you for the child support. You pay it. It ain't going to be that much right now anyway because the baby is two months. It ain't going to be that much right now. And that's another way you can get your child too, bro. Because if she say, I got to pay for the daycare, the babysitter, you can say, I'm the daycare. I'm the babysitter. You see what I'm saying? So you can factor and you can say, I can handle that. And the hearing officer will accept that because you are the father. I want to spend time with my child so the baby can be with me Monday through Friday while she go to work. We ain't got to pay nobody else. I'm the father. So you can you can mitigate some of that child support. Okay, but this is all. This is once once that's even in like once I even go through court and all that for that. Like, I can't do that right now. Okay, you can't do it right now. I can understand. How long before you can do it, though, because... No, that was that was a question. Like, are you saying, like, if we were to go for custody, that's when I can do that? Or I can do it, like, as of right now? You can do it right now. Right now, yeah. you can do it. You can initiate custody right now. And you can initiate, if you want to, you can voluntarily take yourself to child support. You know, or you can wait till she take you. That's up to you. Now, here's what you need to understand, though, my brother. Yes, if your baby mom is getting wick, she's getting welfare, she's getting the uh, the EBT card, food stamps. If she is getting subsidy from the state and she don't take you to child support till your son is five, they're going to make you pay back all of the subsidy that they gave to your son. That's why sometimes it's good to take yourself to child support. So that way you don't have all these arrears accumulating, all this back money accumulating. See, my oldest daughter, right? She's 19 now. She's a young lady, but her mother took me to child support when she was six weeks. She was either, she was between six weeks and three months. When her mother took me to child support and she took me 
because I didn't marry her. So it was a revenge thing, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of glad she did. Because by her taking me to child support when my baby was so young, she wasn't able, anything she got, if she applied for anything at all, they had to take into account that I was already paying. So I didn't end up with no arrears for no food stamps or WIC. She was college educated and working, so I don't even know if she would have qualified for any of that anyway. But if she would have, she wouldn't have got it or she wouldn't have got as much because she had taken me to child support so young. So that was the benefit of me being in the system when my baby was so young. I didn't have to worry about finding out five, 10, 15 years later, you owe the state of Pennsylvania $30,000 for WIC food stamps and aid to families with dependent children. So, you know, definitely get your custody. And you might wanna, I know it's tough because you don't know how it's gonna go, but with the situation you dealing with, I think I would take myself to child support and make them declare me as the uh, parent who will provide the child care for the mother. You know, keep your uh, keep 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 your payments and stuff down, bro. That makes sense. That, that makes sense. But because if they not liking you and they white, bro, you 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 don't don't wait for them to do it. Don't let them drag you in there, bro. You better even if you just do the custody right now initiate something on your own. You want to walk in there and say, I ask for this. Whether it's I ask to start paying or I ask to start getting my kid. Don't let them do it because then you're going to look like the black father who just make babies and don't take care of you. You know how they make us look. And because you're dealing with a white family, bro, they're going to play with all that. So you need to take yourself into the court first, bro. Trust me. Go to them for the custody. Say, listen, I just want my son six hours on Saturday. I don't care how low it is, bro, but get in that system as the protagonist. Get in there as the protagonist. Don't come in there as the antagonist where they had to drag you in there. Don't do that. It's not going to be good for you. Be proactive, man. I've been where you at. Trust me. Be proactive. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. That's it, some jewels. Because I, I, I know, and you know, like a lot of people don't know. Right. That, like, like if I was to tell somebody, like, well, I'm going to just voluntarily take myself to child support, they'd be like, why would you do that? But how you put it, it, it makes sense. Yes, sir. And also, uh, another reason why you got to go to custody, I'm going to tell you another reason why you got to go to custody. If you ever end up with your son, let's just say she didn't, you, you had the baby and you babysat, and there's no such thing as babysitting your own child, right? So you care for your son and she don't come back. Or well, y'all get into an argument. And you take the baby with you because she high or whatever. I'm just hypotheticals. She could call the police and get you arrested on kidnapping in Pennsylvania. If you are with that child, she can get you arrested on kidnapping your own child because you don't have the custody established. So you need to go in there, bro. You need to go in there and make sure it's on paper that, you know, whatever amount you want. And this is the other thing you want. This is the other thing you want. Physical custody, I don't care how many hours you ask for. Make sure the hearing officer or the judge, whomever they put you in front of, make sure they declare that y'all have shared legal, my brother. Don't forget that. Shared legal custody. Shared legal custody. That means she cannot make medical or educational decisions about that child without you. Because you don't want your son to get five or three and he on medicine and ADHD and they talking about he retarded. What you doing with my son? She can't do that if you got the shared legal. So get your shared legal, get your partial physical, and then, you know, get ready for that child support because you know it's coming, bro. And like I said, think about whether you should go for child support too because if she getting any type of aid from the state, I'm telling you, Pennsylvania going to make you pay it all back. All of it. I went and I don't even think nobody in Pennsylvania knows this. No, we know. We we learned through example. <laughs> we learned through we learned through experience, bro. I walked into child support when we had our child support hearing when my baby was not even six months yet. And I came with all the receipts, right? I had all the receipts, like a box. I bought everything, maternity clothes, everything she needed, I took care of, right? So I'm in there with my box of receipts, young proud father naive. You know what the hearing officer says? He says, I cannot give you credit 
for any of those receipts. She admitted they were mine. He said, are these real? She said, yeah. He said, wow, that's a lot of receipts. I said, I know it is. Guess what he said? He said, I cannot give you credit for these receipts unless she agrees to it. I said, what? He said, yep. She has to agree to give you credit. And you know what she said? I'm not giving him no credit. So she didn't give me no credit for the receipts. But again, I still ended up okay because she took me so young that there was nothing else she could try to get on the side that I would have to pay for later. So, just, you know, just be, you got 18 years, bro. Don't, don't wait around. I, I, I would get my share legal and I would get my partial custody. And I would make it so if this baby ever got to go to the daycare, the baby come to me. My baby don't need to go to no daycare. And no more babies with the white girls, bro. No more babies with the white girls. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. All right. That snow bunny crisis is killing us. There's enough good sisters out there. I know we got some sisters with issues, too. But we got a lot of good women, man. Get you a nice good hey, sister up there in Pittsburgh. I, you know what I would like to see? Uh, you, I mean, well, I ain't trying to change up your subject. But, like, because just real quick, like, you know, me and her had a conversation before. I mean, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about, whatever. But, you know, it's crazy because, <clears throat> not to change it up, but, like, Mexicans and Dominicans, Puerto Ricans and all them, like, if, if you were to ask them, like, hey, what color are you, you know, and, and they, they're they not going to tell you brown. They know their origin, right? So right. it's like, like, we as black people, like, we'll say we're black or, you know, even white people, like, they don't know they're Russian or German or some shit like that. They're white. Right, right. And, you know, so... <sighs> I don't want to get too in depth about it because, like I said, if I was to have a conversation with my friends and be like, well, we're not black. We could be Haitian. We could be, you know, Swahili. We could be all this other words. Well, remember, know? those are just nationalities. So that's not your true essence either, right? So if you're Haitian, Nigerian, all of these words, the, the, these names did not exist 5,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago. They're all superficial. There was no Muslims. 5,000 years ago. There was no Christians 5,000 years ago, right? There was no Haitians, Jamaicans, Puerto Ricans because none of those lands were identified as that. So what were you in the beginning? And I would argue we were African. We were Ethiopian. We were Alkibalanian. These are all some of the oldest words that our ancestors used to define themselves. And I believe that we can use any of them now to define. I agree with you. We are not a color. But the reason I do not object to us using the word black is because although I prefer African or Ethiopian to indigenous words of the continent, I don't object to black because when you say you are black, there is no confusing you with any other people on the planet. Everybody on earth knows who the black people are. Now, the reason why black has become more common than African is because we got a lot of Africans running around claiming they're not African. You understand? So that's why black becomes a catch-all for the original people of the planet because so many of us do to self-hate in miseducation, refuse to identify with who we are. Let me give you, and then you have white folks who will call themselves African because they were born there and because African people, just like African-American people, have a colorblind orientation that is destructive to our whole political agenda. We will let whites and Arabs and East Indians call themselves an African, but you can never call yourself a European. You can never call yourself an Indian. You can never call yourself an Arab, but we will let them call themselves African. So then that kind of messes with the identity too, because you got these people who are not African, but black people are allowing them to call themselves African. But when you say black, everybody knows who black people are. There's no confusing black people with anybody else. You can play games with any other word, but you cannot play games with the word black. And for me, from a spiritual perspective, Blackness is a very spiritual quality. You know, spirituality is developed in dark in blackness. The baby develops in the mother's womb in darkness. 
The child is conceived in darkness. The greatest and most mysterious things that take place in this world take place in darkness. The universe was conceived and created in darkness. So for me to be called black is nothing negative. Black is divinity. God was always conceptualized as being black in every ancient African tradition. Every messenger and prophet was black. So like the late great Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad said, blackness is color, consciousness, creativity, and a connection to the creator. So I do not have a problem with being called black, but I do much prefer to be called African. Okay, but I, I get the whole concept too of why you don't even... But I, I'm going to pick with you for a minute though, my brother. I'm going to pick with you. And this is what I want to pick with you on. How can you be so serious about blackness and our need to identify ourselves with our true origin, but yet you recreating our babies with non-African women. So how do you rectify All that right. contradiction? And, 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 I'm and, I, and I'm glad you asked that, right? So again, understand, I'm going through motions. I'm still 26. Now, me and, me and, my, me and her, my, whatever you want to call her, we used to work cool, you know what I'm saying? But She's an intelligent woman, besides race, whatever. You know, this is the like, same conversation I'm having with you, I had with her. So it's not about race. It's about w w what can I learn from one another? Like, what can we learn from one Okay, another? let me ask you a question. You said it's not about race. Let me ask you a question. That, I'm, no, I'm telling you, that's what my mindset was, you know? Okay, like, this, okay, this, okay. This, this woman is like, you know, we, we can share knowledge. Like, we can talk, you know what I'm saying? Talk about anything. But you, you could talk to a black woman about... Who's going to understand you more, that white woman or a sister? <laughs> Who's going to understand you more, a black it's woman rhetorical. or a white woman? It's, it's rhetorical, you know. You didn't answer the question. The, 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 you know, I mean, honestly. So, I'm, so, so it sounds like, and I'm not getting on you, my brother. We just having a brotherly conversation. But it sounds like you are not yet ready to give up your snow bunny card. I mean, like, be honest with me. Be honest with me. You will date another white woman. Let me let me tell you like yes or no, and then you can explain. Yes or no? Will you date another white woman? Probably not. You said probably. probably Why not. is it probably, my brother? Well, are are you mixed race? Are you mixed race? I'm not. Okay, so you okay? You African? And I understand. And I understand. Like you know, if people recreate with different races, that it kind of extincts a race. But again. No, 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 no. Listen, mixing with the white woman is not going to extinct us because we are the original seed of God. We can't be extinct. But what it does do is it confuses the consciousness of African people. So your son, that young African, right? Because it don't sound like his white side has any intention in teaching him about his black side. If you're not there, to make sure you drill him on who he is, he's going to be confused. Do, do you see what I'm saying? So it, it causes a confusion of consciousness, which can be used against our people's progress. That's the issue. And, and I want to touch up on it too, real quick. Like, so, uh, you know, and, and not trying to go all over, but, you know, back in the Constitution, how they use the word bondage and all that type of stuff, I feel like. As long as people, and this is just my personal opinion, uh -huh. is you know, again, white people they came up red, blue, crip, blood, white, black, da 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 da. I didn't know. I actually learned today. You know, what I'm saying like from from you saying everything is is black. Like I, I learned that today. But you know, from what I what my mindset was was they just threw colors together, told us this was this, and you know what I mean. This is how you start beefing, whatever. So when I was able to look up past that. Um, you know, I, I kind of like, I wouldn't say like was biased because I, I still love my people, you know what I'm saying? And anything I learn, whether it comes to investing into stocks, flipping property, everybody that I love, that's my culture. I, I provide that information to. Right. You know, but, but, but let me give an example, my brother. Okay. When you build your empire, that woman had your seed. 
So she's going to be after she's going to be able to go after a significant portion of your empire just by virtue of conceiving your son. And she might not use none of that money on your son. That's money that could have been went to the community. It could have went to you building more businesses to hire more black people. I want you to see the economics of this. The psychology and the economics of interracial dating, mating, and reproduction does not benefit us. It is a significant problem because psychologically you confuse the offspring and economically you rob your community and give to the people who have already robbed us enough. Why give her that leverage to take from your community? Because taken from you is taken from your community because you belong to us. So why give her that le leverage to take from your community and give to her own? Haven't they robbed us enough? Haven't they? I mean, damn, they stole us as people, stole our inventions. They steal our music. They steal our culture. They steal our kids. And now you want to give her a baby. Yeah. For what? I mean, is your argument to say that, like, like, Black women don't put people, men on child support too. That's black true. women do, but she's not doing it because you're black. The black woman is a victim of circumstance created in the context of racism. That white woman would be a racist whether you lived in America, Europe, or anywhere else. Her situation is not a result of context. It is a result of her consciousness. Yeah. And it's already too late. I made the baby with her. and that, that that's the Well, issue. right, but... That ain't my issue with you. My issue with you is it doesn't sound like you are against going back to her. And let me say this. Let me say this. I do got to say this. I do got to say this. And some of the listeners might disagree with me because that is a child. I will say this, though. I will say this. I don't have a problem with you going back to her for the sake of your child growing up in the home with both parents. I believe the needs of a child supersedes okay. the agenda of our community. So if you said, Doc, I don't want my son being raised by no white man. I don't want my son being raised by no white man. I'm going back until he's 17, 18, 12, 10. I would support that. But what I'm getting from you is you're very much still open to dating, mating, and reproducing with no, non-African no, women. No, 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 no. You said with white women? Any, anything that's not black. White, no, Arab, no, China, no, I don't no, care I mean, what it what is. I, what, what, what I want to do, like I said, I don't even believe in like going to the custody. I, I want to get back with the woman, you know, and it's... But you want to get back with her because you like those vanilla cookies. You're not trying to get back with her to raise your son under the same roof. You just want some more of that vanilla cream not cheese. Even. Not even. <laughs> you funny, a hey, hey, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. Seriously, you got to cut. I don't. I wanna, I wanna, let me ask you a question, brother. Let me ask you a question. I, I need you to be honest with me. Be honest with me. What is it that you young brothers are so enamored with? As it relates to these white girls, what is what what is she doing that lures y'all in? Educate me, my brother, because I've never not, dated out the. Speak for everybody as a whole, well, speak for you. Speak what was speak it about? Speak. What what do you love about the white woman so much? What is it? Tell me. Okay, well, let's be clear. I, you know, I didn't. We didn't plan on having a child. It was, I understand. Uh, I understand. You know, but you were attracted to her. What was yeah. it? What did it? You laid with her, why? Were you drunk? Were you high? Do you like the white skin? What was it? What was the hook? Man, I mean... It's was like, she taking you know, care of you financially? Like, like what? Okay, so you know what? I'm going to say fuck that you on camera and be completely honest with you. Yes, sir. You know, just giving you my, my real... Uh, like, honestly, reason why I like white women... Um, I mean, and not to put black women down. I love them too. But it's just that me having it, my experience with black women, I either had to, you know, go, like, if we would argue, like, and, and it's the same. I, I believe women is women, but, you know, you got to go through fighting brothers and, and all type of shit. Not not to say you scary, but it's like, who want to go through all that? A white woman, you tell her, look, like, look, this is how it's going to be. And, and, and I mean, they don't really argue with you. I'm learning once a girl goes through post, uh, you know, what is that word? Postpartum. Postpartum. A woman is a woman. A woman is a woman. But usually, a white woman, they just, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying it to put 
anybody down, but like they more just free willing to to to, to what? do what they man say. You know so you saying the it's white like, woman is more respecting of masculine leadership and direction? Is that correct? I mean, I, how you to an extent? She's more willing to let a man lead her, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you saying there's no black women who will do the same thing? I'm saying I had experience with them. I mean, I, and I'm not saying I'm not, I wouldn't date them. You know, like I said, I think it's it for me with a white woman. If I can't make it right with the mother of my child, I just want a, 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 a women to talk to, like on some friendship. I ain't even trying to do anything, get in no other relationship. But if I if I was to, it, it would be, like I'm not saying I wouldn't get in a relationship with a black woman. And there are a lot of women that, that are black that can, you know, do the same thing. But I here's the thing, though. Even, even if you are correct, even if you are correct, don't you understand why that is, though? See, here's my thing. Even if it is true, and I'm not saying it is, that black women are less willing to let a black man lead. Even if that's true, and I know it's not true in the religious community, because in the church, in the mosque, where you have strong chauvinist gender orientation, the women are looking for men to lead them. So I know it's not true for all black women. And since most of us are Muslims and Christians, it can't be true for most women, right? Now, if you say women who do not profess a religion, they may have more trouble having a brother lead them. Okay, but you still got to understand why. The black woman has had to be the leader for centuries because of what was being done to us. So we should be able to look at her and say, yes, okay, a woman of any other race is going to be more accepting of my natural leadership of the home, but the black woman, not so much because she has always had to be the leader, not because anything was wrong with me, but because of what white supremacy was doing to me. In other words, why do you give up on her just because you have to overcome an extra obstacle? That's the problem I have with you brothers who go to the white girl. So what? Why not work through it with her? Why not? You're absolutely right. I'm not even, hey, you're right. You know, I would, I would, I would strongly say that a lot of brothers, that you know, a lot of brothers who are in the white women, they probably would say like, you know, I mean, because they, like any any black, and, and we got the right to, but carry animosity, you know, for over, you know, three hundred years, like this been going on, but it's like, okay, we got to understand who's who's held accountable because you know you've been put in position to 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 be an independent mother and all this and that again it's it's not our fault and we we're supposed to put our or complete you know full 100 percent 110 percent loyal trust all that and, and and grow with this person but they they still carry that resentment within themselves and 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 you know it's like why should you have to go through that as because we got to understand who 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 did this you know what i'm saying right so, i mean but do you know what it comes down to, my brother? It comes down to what you value, what your priorities are, and what principles do you live on. See, it's really only two camps in the whole African diaspora. It's only two camps. I don't care if you and Pitt with you or Philly with me or Ghana, Nigeria, Jamaica. It don't matter. It's, 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 it's two groups. Those of us who are willing to sacrifice to help get our people back to where we're supposed to be and those who could give a damn and are only living for themselves. That's it. You got the selfish camp, me, myself, and I, and you got the sacrificial camp who says, listen, if I got to go through this hell, if I got to struggle a little bit more with a black woman than I would with any other woman, I'm going to do it because it's what's right for my people. It's what's right for my race. It's what's right for my children, my community. You see, it's the, we, we got to always see the problem with us. The problem with us, my brother, we never consider the best interest of the all when we're making decisions for the me. Let me say that one more time. We're the only group in this country and in this world, the only race, we do not consider the impact on the all 
of the decisions we make for the me. You will never find a Mexican who makes a decision that doesn't take into account what's best for Mexican people. You'll never see a Jew do it. You'll never see an Italian. There's no such thing as a decision for me that negatively impacts my group. They don't do that. We make every decision for us and we never think about the impact of the community. We got to stop doing that, especially the black men, especially you and me, because we are the gatekeepers. We are the protectors. We are the boundary setters. If we don't do it, the children ain't going to do it. Think about all the black boys that will see you walking around with a white woman in Pittsburgh. How does that help us? How does that help? You got to think about the group, my brother. That's I'm not getting on you. I'm just saying we got to start thinking about the group. What is best for the future of the people? Listen, I may not live to see it. You may not live to see it. But we must keep the idea of an independent African people at the forefront of our consciousness and every decision that we make should take into account what is best for my people. You see, don't have no more babies with her, bro. Even if you go back for the sake of your son, <laughs> don't have no more babies with her, man. Because you just said, and the other thing you said, you know, with a black woman, you got to fight her brothers and all this drama. But you just said your son's racist grandmother can't stand you. So what's worse, putting up with the black woman's family or dealing with this white privileged woman White racist privileged grandma who about to put your ass through hell for the next 18 years, bro. Uh, yeah, either way, you're going to be in jail. So, yeah. Be careful, yeah. man. Be careful. Wear protection. No more babies till you, till yes, you find sir. you a queen that you want to be with. And, um, I mean, if you're going to get back with it, don't play with it, though. Because if you go back to you, you, don't play with that white woman. If you want to stay there for your son's sake. Then stay there because if you play with her emotion, she's still a woman. She's going to make you suffer. Hey, you said you do consulta uh, consultations. Like how, how, would, how could I like reach back out to you? Just shoot me a text message okay. and we can set it up. But I don't know if your white baby mom wants to have a consultation with Dr. Umar. I don't have a problem having one with her, but yeah, I don't she, know. She, we talk about stuff like this all the time. I promise to God, like it get on her nerves. But I understand like all white people racist, you know, but. Yeah, you know, they, 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 they just, they just always get in their feelings when you bring up some shit like we complain, but, you know. I feel yeah. you, man. Be careful up there, bro. Be careful. Appreciate you. All right, now. Be and, safe, kid. Have a wonderful day. Lamar. You too, bro. All right. Lord have mercy. This snow bunny crisis. Y'all better stop this. Y'all be Y'all hurting us. Please leave your message for seven seven three four one six one seven six five. Sister Felicity, peace and love. This was Dr. Umar calling you. I know I'm a little late. Um, but uh, I was just wanted to reach out to you because you did request the call. Much love to you, gorgeous. Be blessed. Peace and love, brother Mike, Dr. Umar. How's Winston-Salem, North Carolina treating you? Peace and love, brother Johnson. How are you? I'm well, I'm well, I'm well. What's going on with your child there, my brother? Well, it's not necessarily my child, but I think this is something that is important for your viewership, which is the academically gifted testing. Uh, yes. Which is coming up. And so the school system is trying to push this through because they feel like it's the only way to get your child to 
your school system. I'm your academically gifted um, instructor that's a part of your school system. Ask them specifically what test they are taking and when they are taking it. So you can be aware. There are free sample tests on Google that you can find, but we need to be prepared for these tests because if you don't, if you walk into these tests and your kid has never seen it, never seen the style of the questions, then of course they're not going to do well. And that's the point that I wanted to make to your constituency, Brother Johnson. I got you. I got you. And just to add to that for the sake of clarity, Brother Mike, when we do testing for mental giftedness, because in Pennsylvania, we still have mental giftedness law here. Um, about 10 years or so, the feds did away with mental giftedness as a protected special ed category. So when they did that, every state must decide for itself if they still want to have a state guaranteed mentally gifted program and evaluation process. Pennsylvania still has a state guaranteed mentally gifted evaluation and service process. To be clear, if I'm going to be evaluating your child for mental giftedness, for them to get the official MG category, I am not allowed to provide that parent or child with any prep material on that evaluation. In other words, if it is psychological testing or school psychological testing, the the test taker nor their parent neither the test taker nor their parent is allowed to be privy to any of the questions at all for us to do something like that we could be stripped of our certifications and licenses you see now with academic testing you can get prep so if you're going to take the sat you can get prep you're going to take the north carolina state assessment you can get prep but if you are taking a psychological assessment there is no prep for that. And it's intended for you not to receive any prep because we're testing for your quote unquote native level of intelligence or academic skill. We want to get you, you know, at your baseline without you having had any prep. Because with our testing, you don't get grades, right? You don't get A, B, C's and D's. You don't fail it either. It just gives us ranges of performance and ability. If that makes sense to you. No, it, it totally does. You know, I, I am just coming into the world of this academically gifted, um, these programs. My daughter's a second grader, um, so she's going to be taking the test for the third grade. And I had to email the school system her academically gifted and, um, instructor for the whole school system and ask specifically, what tests are they taking? When are they taking it? I went online and found a practice test for that. Just with my daughter, I mean, you're not going to know what questions are on the test, but you can teach them, of, okay, these are how they're worded. This is the style of questioning. This is how long these sections are. Prepping them on test-taking skills and timing to make sure that, that she can perform as best she can. I got you. I got you. Let me hit you with this too, my brother. No, I, I was in Winston-Salem. I was about to say, I've never been to Winston-Salem. Yes, I did. I had a book release in Winston-Salem. I was there. You were there. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be coming back to Carolina at some point to do my Black Parent Boot Camp training as well at some point. Yeah. But I appreciate you for that call, my brother. No, thank you. Have a good day. You too now. All right. Brothers and sisters, I have been with you since 6.30. 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.00. Five hours I have given you. I was with you all day at the festival last week. I will be with you in Cincinnati next Sunday. Brooklyn Boot Camp the Saturday after. Nat Turner, Broward County, Jacksonville, Florida, so forth and so on. Please donate to the school. Please hit the cash app. I have a question, two questions for y'all as I let you go. You can donate dollar sign FDMG school on the cash app. My first wife, dollar sign FDMG school on the cash app. That's my first wife. And my second wife is paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. That's my second wife. Make sure you hit the cash app and the PayPal. But I got two questions and I like you to text me the answers. Y'all ready? 
two questions and I would like for y'all to text me the answer. Two questions and I would like y'all to text me the answer. Question number one. Question number one, serious question. Dr. Umar is asking my supporters. This is not for the Kunocracy. This is not for the one percenters. This is not for the YouTubians. This is not for the Kunocracy. This is not for the one percenters. This is not for the YouTubians. Question number one. Should I pursue my license as a psychologist? Which basically means I have to go work under a licensed psychologist for a year. And I have to take the tests. Should I spend the next year and a half getting my license as a psychologist, clinical psychologist? Or should I go to law school and become an educational attorney? Law school will be three years. I would go at night because we will have FDMG, evening law school, three years or one and a half years getting my license as a psychologist. What do y'all think? What is more beneficial to the people? That I get my license as a psychologist or that I become a licensed attorney? One and a half years versus three years. What is your opinion? I really want to know what you think. I can't do both because we have the school. I can't do both. I can't do both. It's either get your license. I'll basically be working in the evening, right? Doing evaluations and therapy till I get my 1500 hours. And then I take my state test and my national psychologist test. Year and a half, right? Or go to law school at night, two years of classes, one year of an internship at night. I can't do both. Law school for three years, get your license for a year and a half. What benefits? And if I got my license as a lawyer, I would be an educational attorney. We do not have a major black educational attorney in the country. What benefits the people? I'm only doing one. I'm not doing both. What do you think I should do? That's question number one. Text me your answer. 215-989-9858. Text me your answer. Number two, as we get closer to FDMG, as we get closer to FDMG, as we get closer to FDMG, should I live in Delaware or should I stay in Philadelphia? Should I, it's 30 minute drive, 30 minute, should I live in Delaware or should I remain in Pennsylvania? Should I stay in Pennsylvania and move closer to Delaware? For my safety, as well as the benefit of FDMG, what is better to move to Delaware, stay in Philly, stay in Pennsylvania, but move closer to Delaware? Let me know your thoughts. With that, I want to say I enjoyed these five hours with you all. I hope you're having a beautiful, productive Saturday. I have to get ready for the boot camp in New York in two weeks. I got to get ready for Cincinnati next Sunday, brothers and sisters. There will also be an awards banquet on October 3rd in Yonkers. If anybody wants to come to that, I'll be posting the information. The TFN Network will be hosting that. If you need the flyer for the Brooklyn boot camp, text me. Flyer for Cincinnati, text me, Nat Turner Land, NatTurnerLibrary.com. Once I have the Broward County, Florida info, you'll get that. I might be in Los Angeles on the 23rd of October. Millersville University homecoming, uh, 15th and 16th of October. I'm not speaking, just attending. And if anybody wants to invite me to anything, please put invitation, speak an invitation. That's why I'm missing some of y'all invitations you are not put the subject line needs to be relevant to me or I'm not going to open the email. The subject line needs to be relevant to me or I'm not going to open up the email. Make sure you support the school. Podcast, Dr. Papa Podcast, second up second episode, $9.99 a month. I will be dropping the link, or you could text me for the podcast link. I will be dropping the link, or you can text me for the podcast link. I enjoyed today's live. Please save it. A lot of good cases, some crises that I hope that hopefully will take care of themselves. 
This is the Prince, and I am out. Peace and black power.